fault. It's gonna be your fault. Who put these brand new seats in? <laughs> yeah, I know they look good, don't they? Andrew, well, seriously, I really do like a new vehicle. I appreciate it. <laughs> So, as you can see, this is one of the explorers that I was telling you guys about how you can, you know, you can pick up one of these things pretty cheap. This particular explorer has a salvage title. Hold that, Andrew. Let me get this battery up. This particular one has a salvage title, and basically all we're going to be doing is taking a motor, transmission, and any parts that we need to off of this thing use in a Mustang. The reason I'm telling you guys this is because that's not something that, we often look into is a vehicle with a salvage title. Most of the time, these things are just gonna get crushed. This is gonna be an engine for, actually, I think Nate's actually putting this uh, in his truck, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, this is gonna go in his truck. Andrew, drive us, drive us home. All right, so I want to cover a couple of other things. So it's been a long night here. We just got Andrew's car going. Uh, if you guys haven't seen it yet, go watch the video where he put the faceplated transmission in his car. But it's a little later on in the same night. So what's one of the worst things that can happen to your Fox body? Engine going out, right? That dreaded knock. We all know it, we've, we've been there. If you've owned one of these cars or anything long enough, you've heard that knock, that bottom end, thud. Maybe you've even thrown a rod out of the oil pan. I mean, it can get ugly, right? At that moment, that's like the worst thing that could ever happen. So the reason why I wanna make this video is because I know there's a lot of guys out there that have these cars and maybe you're mechanically inclined, but you don't know how to build an engine or you're not comfortable building an engine and or you don't have the money to go pay somebody to build an engine for you and install it and all that type stuff. There's a lot that goes into building an engine, guys. If you've never done it before, it's not necessarily easy. So. What I wanna talk about are some of your options. So as you all saw the Explorer earlier, we picked this thing up. Now we got this thing dirt cheap, right? I'm not saying that everybody's gonna be able to get something like this as cheap as what we got, but we're getting this thing for 400 bucks, right? Nate's gonna come in, pull the engine, transmission, everything out of it. Then we have a motor and transmission that we can put in any one of these cars. You can go pick up an engine, transmission, whatever the case may be, out of another vehicle typically a lot cheaper than what you can go get one built for or if you don't have the knowledge and you just don't have the money you know you can just go pick one of these things up and it's a lot easier you got a lot less money in it honestly you got a lot less time too wouldn't it be so easy to just grab an engine a running engine out of a vehicle and drop it in now one of the benefits from the explorer engine is this has already got gt40 heads gt40 style intake it's a pretty good running little engine that's what's in this car right here it has gt40 heads off of an explorer and this little car runs good puts down decent power so you really can't go wrong with that <clears throat> also you have your f-150s you can go pick an engine up out of uh vans a mercury mountaineer a grand marquee uh a crown vic all of those older cars same engine right so you can go pick that up i just wanted to remind you all of that now some of you want to build your engines so this video is obviously not for you but for those of you, like I said, who maybe are on a budget or just don't have the knowledge, there are other options out there. Trust me, we're going to be picking up another one of these Explorers. We have one left and we're going to go get this thing and bring it home and pull the engine transmission and all that out of it so that we have another motor. If you think about it, the 65 in here needs an engine, right? Now we've got a 289 we could put in here, but it needs to be rebuilt. So what's the quickest way to get an engine in this car? Well, out of one of those Explorers. They run, they drive, you can pull it out, drop it in here while we're building the other engine. So that's also another option for you guys. This engine over here, we'd love to just rebuild it, 
do something else with it. But if you want to get an engine back in your car and get it running and possibly even leave it, then grabbing something out of another vehicle is always an option anyway. Guys, think about how many Explorers are still on the road and were on the road. The old Grand Marquis, the old Crown Vicks, vans, trucks, these 302s are everywhere. And if you really want to step your game up, you can go ahead and put a 351 Windsor in one. Those came in the trucks, vans, stuff like that. So just look around. It's food for thought anyway. Don't think that it's the end of the world because trust me, I've been there. And when that engine starts making a noise, when you get the bad news that the engine's gone, guys, it, it's a lot of money, especially when you have to pay a shop, right? So I always like to say it's just nuts and bolts. And when it comes to pulling an engine out of a car, it literally is just nuts and bolts. You can find somebody with a with an engine puller or chair picker, whatever you want to call it. Get a couple friends over, have some beer, some pizza, and you can pull your engine out and drop another one back in. There's really not a lot to it, right? Now, building an engine, you need to know what you're doing. So that's why I say that this is always a good option anyway. Also, once you get this engine out of the Explorer or whatever the donor car is, if you will, you can still go ahead and put a camshaft in it. If you got any upgrades on your car already, all that stuff will transfer over, meaning like upper and lower intake, headers, all that stuff will transfer over. So also something else to consider, you can always get rid of the engine that you've got, right? Now, if you've slung a rod through the side of this thing, chances are you're not gonna get anything for it. But uh, if it's just a worn out engine, something like that, maybe the heads are still good and the intake's still good, there are people who will buy it. So you can put that engine on the marketplace or something like that and get a couple hundred bucks back out of it if you want to. So this will kind of offset the cost. I know not everybody has a large budget. You can't go out and buy the best of the best and you can't afford to pay somebody to build an engine. I can't afford to pay somebody to build an engine for me. We always have to do the stuff on our own. And sometimes, you know, when an, when an engine goes out, right, and you're in bad need, that may not be the time to be paying somebody. Maybe you just don't have the money. May not be the time to to do heads and cam and all of this other stuff that you wanted to do. I know a lot of people say that. They say, okay, well, while you've got the engine out, you need to do this. Bullshit. If you got the engine out and you don't have the funds, get something else back in it. You wanna know when a car goes to crap, when it doesn't run. When a car's sitting there with no engine, no transmission, that's when things start to rust out, start to rot, and cars get forgotten about, right? You will forget about a car sitting there with no engine and no transmission in it in a heartbeat. You'll always find something else to do. If you can go ahead and stick something else back in it, even if it's not what you truly wanted, and get this car back on the road, get it driving again, you probably just saved that car's life. You can always come back later on and build that other engine once you get some money. I'm just trying to help you guys out, but I'm gonna go ahead, wrap this video up, and as always, thanks for watching.